What's up everyone? My name is Marie. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another speed build. So for today's video, I'm building a little bungalow in the world of Oasis Springs, as you can see. And uh, yeah, I mainly built this because it's definitely been a while since I built anything in Oasis Springs. And someone actually suggested or asked if I could build something in Oasis Springs. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? I haven't been here for a while. I haven't done that in a little while. So I figured I would build a little bungalow in the world of Oasis Springs. And I think that this one turned out very cute. I was working off of a reference picture for the facade of the house. However, it didn't really end up looking anything like it. It was just something that got me started really on the build. And uh, yeah, then I kind of just made it my own. And as you can see, the whole shape of the house is very mid-century modern inspired. That was definitely what I was trying to go for. And um, yeah, that also really fits in this world very nicely. So yeah, it's definitely a little bit mid-century modern inspired as far as the shape of the house goes, but it's not like, it's not entirely mid-century modern. Um, it is definitely very modern, but it also is a little bit, industrial looking i still i'm still kind of inspired by the new items that we got in the industrial loft kit so i definitely used some items in this house as well i was kind of trying to figure out how i could uh, make these styles kind of work together and what i could do with the industrial furniture in a more modern or mid-century modern inspired house like this one so yeah that was a nice a um, little experiment and I think it turned out very nicely. I think the whole like industrial furniture went really nicely with this house. That also has to do with the fact that I use the windows from Moschino stuff for this house. Um, I also use some different windows, some smaller ones, but I also use the Moschino windows as like a couple of feature windows. And yeah, that immediately gives it more of a industrial look and feel. So yeah, it all worked nicely. It all worked together quite well. And I was definitely struggling a bit with the lighting in this world because as you can see, um, the lighting for this lot is not the best when it comes to the front of the house. You can get very pretty direct sunlight in the backyard, but you can't really get direct sunlight at the front of the house. So that's a little bit of a shame. That was also quite difficult for the, um, for the screenshots, it just, it didn't really work out. I mean, it worked out in the end, but I wasn't able to get any direct sunlight at the front of the house. It's always a bit unfortunate when that happens. I don't know. Well, I mean, obviously that happens because lots come in all different like directions, place in the world, if that makes any sense. So yeah, it happens sometimes, but I really, really wanted to build on this lot because I don't really use this lot very often. But yeah, now I kind of realize why because of the lighting situation. But it is, it is a fun lot. And I didn't really want to build this house on one of the sandy lots in the desert area. I really wanted to build this on one of the grass lots in the game. So that's what I did. And obviously then you don't have as many lots to pick from if you want to build on the grass in Oasis Springs, because there are not that many green lots this size in the world. So yeah, I didn't really have that many lots to pick from. So I decided to stay on this, on this lot despite um, the lighting situation. It's okay. It worked out in the end, like I said. Um, and yeah, I, I actually closed off a little backyard for this house. I didn't really, um, I didn't really use the whole space I had left on the lot, like all the space I had left for the backyard. I made it a little bit smaller because I wanted to, I wanted the backyard to feel a little bit more cramped and a little bit smaller. Um, so that's what I did. And I used these tiles from Journey to Bat 2. I know a lot of people don't have that pack, which is totally understandable, but I do have it and I love these tiles. I think they're so pretty. I, I don't really use them very often, even when I want to use them, because I know that a lot of people don't have Journey to Bat 2. So I try to not use them as often. But in reality, I really love these tiles. I think they're so beautiful. So this time I actually made an exception for myself and um, I allowed myself to use them. And I'm very happy that I did because I feel like these tiles and this swatch, they really fit this color scheme quite nicely and they just really go nicely with this house. 
So for the color scheme on the exterior of the build, you can see that I used a mixture of um, orangey wood tone and dark gray as well. So I just, I really like these colors together. They're fairly neutral, so nothing special going on, but I feel like it looks very nice and modern and very clean. So I was definitely enjoying that. And one of the reasons why I wanted to build on one of the grassy lots in this world is because I wanted to do some landscaping. Um, I always think landscaping in the desert area is a little bit difficult, obviously because there is a lot of sand there and you could just, it's a Sims, it doesn't matter. You can place all the plants like anywhere in the world or it, yeah, it just, it really doesn't matter. But I always try to uh, kind of make the house tie in with the rest of the world, like the surrounding area. So for the sandy lots, I don't really want to do too much landscaping. Obviously, I will place some succulents and cacti and stuff like that, but not really green plants like I placed here. I mean, obviously cacti are green, but you know what I mean? Like I never really place any like bushes or anything, or at least I try not to in the sandy area. But be because this is on a green lot, I was able to do some landscaping and uh, so yeah, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to build this one on a uh, on a grassy lot. Not so much on a sandy lot. But yeah, as you can see, this is a little bungalow. The house is not that big. I was definitely struggling a little bit with the floor plan and what I wanted the layout to be. Um, but I figured I would go for a very open floor plan because this is a very modern house. So I wanted the whole floor plan to be quite open. So when you walk into the house, uh, there's no like closed off entryway or anything. The house was just a little bit too small for that. So I figured the area by the front door, I would turn that into um, into the dining area because that area has a lot of doors, as you can see, off to the bedroom, off to the study and to the bathroom. So all the walls are kind of taken up by, by all the doors. So I figured I would just place a table here in the middle of the space basically and then I would put the living room near or like right by the kitchen which maybe is a little bit weird but this house is so small that everything is very close together so it really really doesn't matter that much um but yeah I just I went for this table and chairs from dream home decorator I did use quite a bit of dream home decorator in this build because it is modern and kind of mid-century modern inspired so that furniture just really goes hand in hand with that whole style so I used a bit of Dream Home Decorator and then like I said I also used um, the industrial loft kit items in here and they really go together quite nicely. As you can see I also picked a tile for the flooring which is not something I do very often. I usually go for wood, wood floors. That's just my favorite thing. It's just nice and warm and cozy and feels homey immediately. But for this house, because it was mid-century inspired and because it was also kind of supposed to be a little bit industrial, I decided to go for a tile floor and I'm really happy that I did because it was just a nice change of pace for me. It was something different and it was just nice. I like that the floor is very cool toned and that the whole house, because of the flooring and because of the walls, is very like neutral and cool toned, which was nice and different. Um, and it gave me a lot of opportunities to kind of jazz up the space a little bit with some um, with some fun colors and stuff like that. So that's really what I tried to do. However, I tried to keep it fairly neutral. And I did also go crazy with the new rug that we got in the new kit. I just really, really love the new rug. I think it's so pretty. I love the colors that it comes in. It's just a nice, fluffy, neutral rug that also has some really funky swatches. And I use one of the funky swatches in the bedroom. I just, and even though the swatches like the um, the pattern swatches are kind of funky. The colors are so nice and kind of neutral in a way. In my opinion, just very usable with the interiors that I tend to go for. So I don't know, I just, I love this rug and I couldn't help myself. So I sized it down and put it underneath the dining table, as you can see, and then I repeated the rug in the living area, just in a different, um, in a different swatch. Um, but I think it works out nicely. 
And then you can see that I was playing around with a color scheme for the dining area. I did end up changing it. I was using the light wood swatch for, for the table and the yellow chairs before, but then I just swatched it to a darker brown and the matching white chairs um, just to make it a little bit more neutral and to tie the dining room area in with the kitchen a little bit better. So yeah, that's what I did. The kitchen is kind of small and the spacing of it is a little bit awkward maybe, but it still makes sense to me. I like how it looks. I like how I had the opportunity to use that tall cabinet in the little corner right there because I did have that one square awkward little corner, which I didn't really want that space to go to waste. So I did decide to put another counter piece there, but then it was just looking very awkward on its own. But then I realized I could put a tall cabinet over it and it looks very nice. It just really looks like a built-in shelving unit. Um, and it's just nice storage space, I feel like. So I think it ended up making sense, even though it is a quite awkward, uh, just a little bit of an awkward space, but it makes sense. And the living area is not really in the way of the kitchen. Everything is very um, reachable and usable. And then as you can see, I have this little area left where I placed a large window. So I decided to put the, um, the end cabinet or the end table from the new pack or the, um, the new kit, I should say. So I placed that there underneath the window and I was thinking that it could be like more storage opportunity for um, for the kitchen. So I placed a little bit of kitchen clutter on it and stuff. So yeah, that's a nice decorative area. And then this is the only bedroom in the house. There is another room that you could easily turn into a bedroom, but I just decided to go for a study for that room. But yeah, if you need another bedroom for a kid or just an extra bedroom, you could easily turn the study into an extra bedroom. That's no big deal at all. But here, as you can see, this is the um, the bedroom that I did furnish as a bedroom and I furnished it for two Sims. I did when I was playtesting it, I did realize that my Sim was not able to walk around the bed. I thought she would be able to. I was hoping that maybe she would be able to, but she wasn't. So I just um, all place the bed a little bit into the window so that the headboard is kind of covered up by the wall, not by the window. I meant by the wall, obviously. Um, yeah, I did have to place the bed a little bit more, a little bit further backwards so that the headboard, um, yeah, is kind of invisible. It's inside the wall, which I, I was hoping I didn't have to do that for this bed because I really like the headboard on it. But yeah, my Sim couldn't walk around the bed. Um, however, scooting works for everyone these days, I, I think. At least it's supposed to. So you could always place the bed the way that I did. And if you want to have two Sims sleeping in the bed, you could always just have them scoot. I think that's supposed to work, but I just wanted to play it safe. So I decided to uh, to just move the bed a little bit further backwards so that your Sim can walk around it. Um, but yeah, that's always an, an option that you can go for. And then as you can see, the second bedroom, I turned it into a study area. So I placed a desk in here with a laptop and a bookcase and then just uh, a chair and a plant and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, just a little office space. And for the storyline for this house, I honestly just, I didn't have one. I just, I felt the need to build a modern mid-century slash industrial house. I really wanted to try and combine these styles together. And uh, that, that was my inspiration for this build. So there was no storyline. I tried to think of something when I was furnishing the house, but nothing really came to mind except for I was thinking a couple would be living here and um, they're a younger couple and they don't have kids right now. They're not planning on having kids right now, but they are planning on having kids further down the line. So maybe then they will turn the study into a nursery. Well, obviously they will have to, um, but then maybe later on, if they end up having more kids, then they will move into a bigger house. So I was kind of thinking of this house as a young couple's first like purchased home um, because it's not too big. And uh, yeah, I felt like it wouldn't be too expensive. And I think it didn't end up being too expensive in the game either. I think it's just over 50,000 simoleons, if I'm not mistaken, which for the size of the house is kind of expensive compared to starter homes and stuff like that. But I mean, it's very nicely decorated. It's I'm using expensive items. I'm using um, 
a lot of decorations and stuff like that. It's very like fully furnished and lived in. So I feel like it's not too expensive in that way. I mean, I'm not sure how expensive it exactly ends up being, but we will check that, of course, when we hop into the game after the speed build portion of this video. But I think it ended up being reasonably priced so that you can actually save up for it if you would like to do that. Um, so yeah, then you can have your Sims actually save up for this house and it shouldn't be too much of an issue. But as you can see, we have moved on to the backyard. So there is another dining table in the backyard on the patio with four chairs around it. And then we have a, um, a grill as well and a very nicely sized seating area as well. I was trying to go for a quite luxurious backyard because I mean, it is always the springs and it's always very warm here. So I was thinking that the Sims would probably spend a lot of their time outside as well. So I wanted the backyard to be nice and furnished and um, have a lot of seating areas and stuff. So that's what I went with. And, and then of course, I also gave them a pool because it is the desert. It's always gonna be warm here. Like I just said, the Sims that live here, they, um, they definitely, definitely need a pool. So I put a couple of lounge chairs by the pool. And I think I also placed a ladder going into the pool. However, I placed it over that tiny little fence right there. So I think I actually forgot to play test the ladder, but I don't think your Sims can actually use the ladder because I placed it over a fence technically, even though it's a very small fence that your Sims can walk over. Um, they can just step over it, but the ladder I don't think works that way. Um, but your Sims don't really need a ladder to go in and out of the pool, so it's fine. Or you can just place um, the ladder on one of the other sides of the pool, then you should be fine. But your Sims can use the pool anyway. You don't need a ladder for it, which is very nice. Um, yeah, I also placed a couple of planter boxes in the backyard, as you can see. So your Sims can do a little bit of gardening and just some lounge chairs. And then I put some lights inside of the pool. And yeah, I just, I placed a couple of lights around because I kind of forgot to do that. Um, so yeah, I placed some lights by the fences and by the gates and then that's actually it. So let's hop into the game and I'll show you the house in real time. So here we have the little bungalow in the game. I like how the exterior of this house is a little bit more on the darker side instead of very light and bright and modern. It's more gray and black and just a little bit darker and modern. So that definitely gives it more of an industrial vibe in my opinion. And I just really like those styles together. Back here, we have the backyard, as you can see. We have a nice patio right here and just a nice seating area and some planter boxes and then obviously the pool. And then this backyard actually has two gates. It has one right here coming off of the driveway and it has one on the side as well, which is something I always like to do whenever I'm building on one of these corner lots. And the landscaping right here is actually one of my favorite features of this house. I don't know why, but to me, it just looks very pretty. I love this tree. I barely ever use this tree, but I think it looks so pretty. And I don't know, I just really like this little driveway area. But then right here, as you can see, we have the front door and when we go inside, we have the dining area right here. It's nice and spacious. And the dining area has all these doors off to the different rooms, as you can see. I placed a nice shelving unit over here for some extra storage and just for decoration purposes, obviously. And then over here, we have the living area. I really like this couch combined with these mid-century modern chairs. I think it just looks nice. It's definitely not the same style, but they definitely go together quite nicely, in my opinion. And I put this little end table right here with some kitchen clothes and the bin obviously and then back here we have the kitchen so even though this floor plan feels a little bit cramped it does make sense in my opinion and I really enjoy it so over here on this side we have the bedroom and as you can see I did place the bed a little bit further backwards so that there is no headboard anymore but now my sim was able to walk around the bed so it's accessible from both sides this way then I place this very mid-century modern dresser right here I did try to tie in some mid-century modern details here and there because 
I did use that style for inspiration for this house, but they have this nice full length mirror in their bedroom and just a little plant in the corner. And then over here, we have the second bedroom, which I turned into a study area. So it has this nice large window and then just a desk with a computer. And I also put an easel in here. I didn't necessarily think of the Sims as artists, but for gameplay, it's a nice item to have. So I just decided to place one in the study. And then back here, we have the bathroom, which in my opinion is quite luxurious. The bathroom does have a shower as well as a tub, which is very nice. I love how the tiles on the wall are this light blue color. It just matches so nicely with a rug in the dining area. And I was just very much enjoying that little detail. But yeah, that's actually already it for this little bungalow. So this modern bungalow comes in at just over 55,000 simoleons. So it's a little bit more expensive. It's almost 56,000 simoleons. It's a little bit more expensive than I thought it was, but still, I feel like your Sims will be able to save up for this. So it's not too bad, I feel like. But that's actually it for today's video. So I really hope that you enjoyed this build. You can definitely go ahead and download it off the gallery like I just showed you. My username on the gallery is Simmery Sims. You can also follow me on Twitter and on Instagram if you'd like. My username on there is Simmery Sims as well. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, feel free to do so. And if you want to be notified of every single time I upload a video, just click that little bell icon and you should be fine. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!